Eyes forward, he's got two players round him, checks back, gives it to his left back. Quickly inside to Kai Allen, Celtic switch it left to right. Effie Ambrose, who's 15th minute, minute goal, is the difference between the sides on the night so far. Of course, there was those three goals in Belfast last week. That's put Celtic in command. And uh, as you heard the guys in the studio at half-time, uh, a tough tie awaits us against Elsberg. Currently fifth in the Swedish table at the moment, but they've played about 11 league games. They are the reigning Swedish champions, but it's Celtic, the reigning Scottish champions. Kyle tried to find Sam Rass, but it was well intercepted by McGovern. And Cliftonville number two, I think, has done well. He had that great header just off the line that denied Stokes, and uh, he, he's he's done well at the heart of the defence. They certainly can all hit, you know, holds their heads up high so far in this game in terms of the way they have defended against superior opposition. They're getting in there, they're putting their heads where it hurts and trying to get the ball out of the box. And you know, they're coping, you know, quite well with Celtic, but uh, another interception which uh, maybe just a little bit of slack play from us at the beginning of the second half, a couple of passes uh, intercepted, and I hope that Neil. Well, had a, a, a right, not a go at them, but in terms of trying to keep the level of the play that they started in the first half, you know, they've got to keep that pass. I know that the pace up, and I know it's hard because you have that wee break uh, to be able to get the players to back out in that same frame of mind, but uh, I think that's something Neil would want to do, that, look, we've got to make sure we get this, ta this tie here finished and done. We don't want any banana skins and, and, and mistakes that happen that, uh, you know, to give Cliftonville any kind of sort of chance of snuffing this game at all so let's go and get it done, get it sorted and that be by keeping the level of pace that we, we, we did have in the first half That's Cliftonville on the attack at the moment and they get the first corner of the second half a third corner of the game and it's going to be the captain, George McMullen with 32 early next month and he's going to come and take the first corner of the second half it was Sadak was the left back who took the corners in the first half but this time it's an in swinger from the Cliftonville captain Fraser Foster stands in his goal line, it's taken quickly. Well, not a great touch from Sadak, but he manages to loft it into the box, but it's safely into the arms of Fraser Foster. Not a big fan of, of short corners, but I generally just say that when they don't work. Y yes, it does, and uh, you know, obviously a wee opportunity, half opportunity there by Liam Boyce, who he got himself in the end of it, but there was good pressure on him from Sam and I think Ambrose, uh, both going for the ball and challenging and make sure that he never get any sort of free header on top of Foster and an easy save for Foster but uh, well short corners can work but uh, not often, more often than not but it's just a, to create a slight diversion of uh, you know to more with something that would maybe switch off in the defence but uh, it was good to see our boys being, being at it and going and attacking the ball which you're supposed to do when I think Neil likes to play with a lot with the, with the, um, the zonal mark in, uh, in defence uh, certainly at set pieces so it's what you've got to do you've got to go and attack the ball come down your area uh, and make sure if you if you don't win it, whoever's going to win it, the opposition doesn't get any kind of good header or any power behind it. Clearance there comes off Anthony Stokes. It's gone behind for a goal kick for Cliftonville. Cliftonville corner Devlin. Certainly, as you would expect, the busier of the two goalkeepers in the first half. Jamie McGovern, Barry Johnson, Kieran Caldwell, George McMullen, Stephen Garrett, Eamon Sedak, Mark Smythe, Brian Catney, Thomas Cosgrove. And Liam Boyce, as you see the Celtic dug out there. Celtic starting 11 tonight. Fraser Foster in goal to back four of Lustig. Ambrose, Wilson and Izagiri. Midfield, Forrest, Kyle, Brown, Commons and Samaras. The Stokes up front, although it's a very fluid forward line as Cliftonville tried to go over the halfway line. Caldwell did well to get beyond Izagiri, but you could just see he didn't have the legs to get beyond Kyle. The, pack back, the pass back, well read by Fraser Foster, it's cleared long and eventually headed back into the arms of Conor Devlin by Jamie McGovern. And so with about almost five minutes gone, still waiting the first real chance of the second half for either side as the ball's played over the half line. Again, it's Effie Ambrose who just gathers that one, knocks it forward to Scott Brown in the centre circle, the Celtic half of the field and certainly the fitness of the full-time side the Scottish champions, I'm sure, will continue to play a part the longer the game goes on because Cliftonville have been made to work very hard so far by Neil Lennon's side. Scott Brown switches it left to right over towards Lustig, pulls it out there, cuts inside, he's got Commons ahead of him, cuts inside, Lustig knocks it across, looking for Stokes, it's a poor clearance, but Caldwell manages to get it at the second attempt. And Cliftonville still in their own half, but still in possession. 
there seems to be a wee slight drop in pace from us in terms of closing down as well, uh, as well as when we're on the ball and possessing the options that we're giving the player and the man on the ball. Uh, there doesn't seem to be as, uh, as many as uh, at the time. So, and Clifton Bills seem to be uh, growing in confidence a little bit by that because we are, we're not closing down as well and we're not holding on to the ball as, as, as well we did in the first half. Garrett in possession, comes in off the left touch line, plays it to his captain, McMullen, on his right foot, Jules rolls it across. Cosgrove, the right back, is coming support, knocks it forward to Catney, looking to try and cross it into the box. He's blocked by Izagiri, plays it back to Cosgrove, cuts in, gives it shot to Garrett, who's come in off the left touch line, but he's dispossessed by Col uh, Commons and then fouls Commons. It's a free kick to Celtic midway through their own half. Back yeah. in possession. I think Clifton Villa being in the park as often as what they did and from open play uh, in that first half, you know, in this first five, ten minutes of the, of the second half. But uh, great play from Commons, they read the situation very well and was uh, almost open to a counter attack well, on Clifton Villa, but uh, was filled in the process. So certainly hope we can get the pace up again and the movement that we were shown in that first half. James Forrest on the left touch line, plays it back to Izagiri. Izagiri comes in off the touch line and rolls it to Kyle, takes a touch, moves forward. He's got Commons, Commons takes a touch, gets, tries to get past one man, but flicks it beyond Smythe. It comes off his shins and it's again, it's Clifton Villa in possession. It's slack play, James Forrest gains possession. The ball played quickly by Izagiri. Stokes comes in off the left touch line, leaves it for Brown. Brown out to Izagiri, Izagiri's got Forrest just in front of him, Forrest up against Catney, sliding challenge there from the Cliftonville player, it's a throw in to Celtic about 15 yards from the Cliftonville touchline, down the left hand side in front of this main stand here at Celtic Park it's Stokes rolls it back to Ambrose in the edge of the centre circle in the Cliftonville half of the field Samaras first time out to Lustig gets the return, Samaras in the right touchline, Lustig first time to Brown Brown 25 yards from goal, drives forward. Still Brown tries to flick it beyond his man. Cosgrove does well at the second attempt. It's a throw in right at the corner flag and maybe signs that Celtic just stepping it up a wee bit. They're still in possession. Forrest comes in off the touchline. He's got Izagiri ahead of him. Gives it to Stokes. Stokes in the edge of the box. Takes a shot. It's actually blocked by Chris Commons. Commons is the first to react. Right foot shot. He spins last week in Belfast. We saw him do the exact same thing, but he curled it to the far post. This time he tried the near post, but it went behind. I thought the option was on to do the very same thing as you, done, you, know, you did last week and put it into that corner. If it just decided whether the ball just stuffed up, uh, you know, just uh, didn't allow it to get out his feet a wee bit that he managed to just to pull, or whether he was just trying to put a wee bit of power in it rather than that calm guile that he can do. Uh, I would have rather seen him done than what he did last week and try to put it into that area. Uh, because uh, he has got that ability but uh, yeah, you were right in what you said Paul just that slightly less, Scott Brown the captain, just creating a little bit of more directness and pace and trying to create something Stokes through and goal, he's inside the box well he tried to control it there and it seemed to take a bobble well, he'll be frustrated there the Irishman, it was a through ball from Chris Commons but the, the bounce just seemed to deceive him I think that can happen. Well, well, I was just disappointed with Anthony Stokes here because once he lost the ball in terms of you know the giving up and stuff like that, I think I would like to see him continue to get on the ball, going it quick. He's made him snake, going rectify it by winning the ball back. Commons tried to thread that one through to the overlapping run from Lustig. It was intercepted, but it wins it back, gives it to Kelvin Wilson. Wilson knocks it out left to James Forrest. Celtic have stepped up the pressure now in the edge of the box. Common Forrest cuts inside. Gives it to Kyle. Kyle tries to step beyond the challenge of Catney, but it's Cliftonville now with Boyce. Boyce just pushes Kyle off the ball. A sliding challenge there by Kevin Wilson. Boyce and Wilson end up in the touchline. It's a throw in in front of the Cliftonville dugout to the Irish side. Now just to back over the halfway line will take this one. Yeah, just a concern, I think. Neil's out his dugout, he tracks it off now, so obviously he's just seeing the same concern as what I'm saying. It's just that wee bit of slackness that's it's in the play just at the moment and uh, that same level of passing ability that they showed to, it's just not quite there at the start of the second half Samaras drives forward, sliding challenge it breaks to Forrest, the referee waves play on, Forrest skips past one challenge, takes a shot it's blocked again, Cliftonville throwing bodies in front of the ball it's blocked on the edge of the box and it's the Irish side in possession just in front of the Celtic dugout with Kieran Caldwell tries to flick it through for boys a sliding challenge from Wilson that breaks to Izagiri and Celtic on the attack down the left hand side Samaras is inside but finds Stokes wide in the left Stokes shapes the cross eventually it spins off a Cliftonville player Samaras gets his head onto it but he couldn't direct it goalwards and Scott Brown's the first to react dispossesses 
got it. Celtic captain drives forward, gives it to Forrest. Forrest tries to play the return. Kyle dispossessed by Catney, but every Cliftonville player in their own half. And Effie Ambrose drives forward. He's the, the man that's made the difference so far with that goal after 15 minutes. He tries to play the crossfield pass and dispossessing the ball played forward. I'm not sure if Kieran Caldwell's got the legs for that one. And in fact, he doesn't, and F.A. Ambrose will be relieved because it was him that gave the ball. Yeah, he just a wee bit slack with the pass. It was intercepted, and uh, I think the, the Cliftonville player was certainly in his own half. He wasn't offside, but uh, the superior pace and fitness of uh, both Ambrose and Wilson gave good cover. He's a on the edge of the box, chips it into the box, it's headed clear from the edge of the six yard box. He's off Scott Anthony Stokes' is back. James Forrest nicks in there. Cliftonville just can't clear the lines, it's back to Izagiri. Shapes the cross and flat, plays it back to Stokes. Stokes side foots and it's a wonderful save at his left hand post from Connor Devlin. It was effortless from Stokes, but a great save from the keeper. Fantastic save again by, by Devlin. He was uh, kept off and will win this game. I know they've mentioned that we're not got that second goal, but again it's down to Devlin and about three or four great saves he's had. But fantastic effort from Anthony Stokes. Looked casual about it, but it was directed, certainly getting it to that corner, but uh, for the goalkeeper making fingertip save. Oh, Celtic took the corner quickly. It's now with James Forrest in the edge of the box. Forrest having to run to the left hand side he's been harried and harassed by two Cliftonville players tries to get beyond both of them does well James Forrest still in possession plays it back to Brown great play from the young winger Scott Brown shapes the shoot it's blocked by Samaras Samaras left footed skies it just over the bar and it's gone behind for a goal kick Celtic are getting closer yeah I couldn't do quite like he had done last week done about that same area maybe just slightly a wee bit closer to the, to the goalkeeper um, but yeah, fantastic play, James Forrest driving, had to go round the wide of two players, he was driven wide but managed to find Scott Brown who drove into the box, had a shot, wasn't probably his, quite his best struck shot but still for Samaras, who managed to able to turn at the edge of the box but uh, just wasn't able to control it and keep it within uh, the confines of the, the goal. Well, Kieran Caldwell, the number seven, gets a warm round of applause for the entire Celtic support, he's substituted the first substitute of the night and he's been replaced by Chris Curran. Number 20, he'll just take up a position on the right-hand side, and I'm not sure whether that last, last sprint forward for Kieran Caldwell, where he just couldn't quite get beyond F. Ambrose, maybe told the manager that his, uh, his legs have gone. But Celtic down there, right-hand side with Samaras, Samaras up against McGovern. I'm not sure the referee's assistant hasn't quite decided. In fact, eventually the referee decides, which always seems rather strange when the linesman was right on top of the play and he hesitated waiting for... Uh, the indication from the referee, but it's Celtic with the throw, and it's now with Kyle. Kyle rolls it across to Izagiri, who's going to the central midfield at the moment, plays it out to James Forrest. Forrest again cuts inside, shapes the shoot, it's just gone behind wide. It's a goal kick, and we've gone just over 13 minutes of the second half. It's still Celtic 1, Cliftonville 0. An ambitious effort from James driving in, but getting behind the defender uh, and driving into the space where you thought he'd be able to pull the trigger and have a go. Uh, but uh, again, not his best strike uh, of the night or, or even ever. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see him being able to do, get by the defender and create that little bit of chance for himself. Uh, and you, know, you don't mind that having a wee pocket goal, but I just wish that we just got a wee bit expertly uh, done rather than uh, the finishing shot that you had. Well, interesting, Gary Hooper and Tom Rodgick at the moment are the two substitutes that have been warming up behind the goal line. Whether or not Neil Lennon is going to introduce either of them remains to be seen. Rodgick, of course, came on as a substitute in Belfast and played against Brentford at the weekend. The Australian who will be going to Brazil next summer with his country, having helped them book a place in the finals. But Celtic dispossess Cliftonville. The ball's played through Stokes. Side foots it wide when it was easier to score. Frustration. The Irishman stays on the ground. Well set up by Scott Brown. It should be 2-0. Yeah, that should have been a goal. We, we talked about the composure that uh, Anthony Stokes had for that shot a little bit earlier. The uh, I don't quite... Maybe the ball was just holding up with, you know, the surface tonight and he uh, just mistimed his thing, but that was certainly should have been a goal. He could have done anything. He could have rounded the keeper, uh, but I think he tried to take it first time uh, and just a bit of slackness there from... I mean, maybe just a wee bit of tiredness because I've done a little bit of running tonight, but uh, that certainly should have been a goal for Anthony Stokes. Well, just over an hour gone, you could see from Anthony Stokes' reaction, he knows it should have been the back of the net, but he'll be looking to get on the score sheet. And it's Celtic on the attack again with Izagiri 
James Forrest wide on the left again and he finds the young Scotsman just in front of the Celtic dugout. He comes in off that left touch line, lays it for Kai Howell, who's worked hard alongside Scott Brown in the centre of the Celtic midfield. But it's Effie Ambrose that drives forward, just leaves it to Chris Commons. Commons knocks it right to left. James Forrest cuts inside again, he picks the ball out there, gives it to Izagiri. Celtic pushing forward, the edge of the Cliftonville area. Still Forrest knocks it across to Brown, a chance for the captain to shoot. And he skies it high, wide, and not so hands. So it's still 1-0, but Celtic slowly but surely beginning to lay siege to this penalty area. Dominating the pressure, uh, creating the chances, but unfortunately the last three attempts have certainly not been nothing to write home about. Uh, obviously James Forrest, Anthony Stokes was probably the easiest one. And Scott Brown from slightly further out, but uh, failure to hit the target or even threaten the goalkeeper. We had a couple of good examples of, of chances like that in the first half where we did threaten the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper made some good saves. One was a hit the crossbar, I think, from James Forrest, but there we were just slightly wavered with our shots. Maybe just a little bit of tiredness. I don't know if it's still the early part of the season, maybe just a little bit of tiredness with all the work that they did do in the first half. And, uh, and that control was just not quite there within the shots. It's Cliftonville on the attack. Kevin Wilson read that one well, the substitute current goes out, slightly dramatic reaction there, but he does win, I think he does win a free kick, that so a, a chance to deliver the ball into the box. Shot to that, good season. I think he just fell, knew the ball was going out of the box, fell, uh, and the old stand side linesman fell for it, hook, ling and sinker. Well, it's going to be a free kick to Cliftonville, but there is movement in the Celtic dugout. It looks as if it might be Gary Hooper who is going to be coming on. Certainly Gary Parker has spoke to the fourth official and handed over a sheet But Celtic at the moment with all 11 players back defending this free kick from Clifton Ball. The ball's curled in and it's headed clear by F.A. Ambrose at the far post. George Samaras almost ended up in the penalty box inside the net actually. But it's a throw in to Clifton Ball. It looks like it might be a double substitution. It may well be Rogic and Hooper as we saw warming up but at the moment still the Irish side on the attack at the moment, McMullen has to play it back to say that he knocks it forward. F.A. Ambrose does well, but he's dispossessed there by Barry Johnson. He's forced back, gives it to his left back again. Sedak takes a touch back to Johnson. Johnson is the centre of the Cliftonville midfield, gives it to his captain, has to side foot it back to the halfway line. Cliftonville trying to keep possession. Curran, the substitute. And Kyle snapping at the heels of his. Opposite number, Curran comes in off the right touch line, gives it to Catney. And Cliftonville doing well here just to try and keep the ball. And it's a, a rare moment of a prolonged possession for the Irish side. And it certainly pleased the large travelling support from Belfast who haven't stopped singing. I think from the start of the game, the two Celtic substitutes still standing in the bench, just waiting for a gap in the play. But it's Cliftonville on the attack, the ball clipped across the six-yard box and it's just slid across. How did that? Not sure if Kelvin Wilson got a foot in there ahead of Boyce because if he did, that was a remarkable defensive save, Tom. Outstanding save, uh, goal line clearance by Kelvin Wilson. Just as well, Cliftonville were just about to ball into the back of it. Fantastic play by Cliftonville getting behind us, maybe. Lustig just stood in a wee bit, but yeah, it was a fantastic clearance. Great goal line clearance from Kelvin Wilson. Uh, and great to see him doing his job at the back there and keeping the clean sheet because that was a concern for Celtic or how they get easily get in behind us. Corner cleared at the near post from Scott Brown and the fourth official will now get his board and we are going to see a double substitution and it is going to be Tom Rogic and Gary Hooper and it's going to be Rogic who comes on for Beram Kayal so probably a like for like there I'm not sure Gary Hooper will probably just go right through the middle so whether it's going to be Stokes that will, will come off for him but uh, Beram Kayal gets warm applause to be replaced by Tom Rogic and uh, obviously straight swap. We mentioned that we've not taken the chances we've created. Anthony Stokes missed one, an absolute sitter there just earlier. And if any you need to be in a position in the area inside the box to be able to win the back of the net, and none better than Gary Hooper at the present moment in time. And uh, obviously he's he certainly missed within that box area to be able to go and, and I think that's just a concern that Neil's seen. Uh, to bring on a wee bit more attacking options and also bring on a, a, a true finisher in Gary Hooper. Well, it's Cliftonville again on the attack, and uh, Liam Boyce must have thought that that was his chance to score at Celtic Park there, but Kelvin Wilson denied him, and it's Celtic on the attack now. Half hearted claims for a penalty from the Irish side, but it's Gary Hooper with his first touch, drives forward, knocks it through, looking for Mikael Lustig. Lustig on the edge of the box, takes it 
ball across for a corner kick and Gary Hooper's first contribution is to help set up Celtic's second corner of the second half. Excellent play from Hooper taking the ball in, receiving it, playing an excellent weighted pack. Great support from Michael Lustig. Uh, unfortunately, the defender got in the blade of a, of a decent cross. Corner taken quickly, it's back to Forrest. Forrest clips it across, it comes off a Cliftonville player, breaks to Brown. Brown threads it through, looking for Forrest. Forrest tries to cut it back. Comes again for a corner kick. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we're, we're talking about we're sitting at one nothing, very comfortable in cantering at it, but uh, comfortable just seemed to grow in confidence and they had their chance, not only to get a chance within the game, uh, possibly in the first half. They got that there in the second half there, but fantastic. But for the Greens from Kelvin Wilson would have been 1 1. The ball played into the box. It's Effie Ambrose with the header, head in his hands. I'm sure he must have thought he'd scored his second goal there. It was a good delivery. Commons has played the last couple of corners short, but this time it was into the box. Effie Ambrose will be disappointed he didn't direct that one goal. Yeah, I would say that was probably easier to put in the back of the net than his first chance, but I think he just mistimed it. He's come in, uh, just not a wee bit too high, came off his shoulder, uh, but he'll be very disappointed. We'll have to see that goal celebration again if they put that one in the back of the net and get another double, but uh, no, just a, a little bit mistimed with the header, and he'll be really disappointed because that should have been that game done, dusted tonight. Well, Gary Hooper, of course, has been transfer speculation, but the manager at the pre-match press conference said he's in the squad, he's a Celtic player, and he is available for selection. He's come on, and it wouldn't surprise you if he did end up scoring because he is that type of player. But at the moment, it's Cliftonville again, all so close there. Good flick on from Boyce, trying to find his right back, but he's just got out of play. And Cliftonville certainly growing in confidence. Tom Rogic gets his first touch on the ball. I like the look of Rogic yeah. in midfield. Celtic down the right hand side now. Forrest has switched over to the right touchline. Samaras has drifted on to the left. Gary Hooper gets the ball. Plays it back to Forrest. Forrest cuts in off the right touchline this time, gives it to his captain. And Scott Brown rolls it across to Emilio Izagiri. Izagiri to Samaras. Short gives it to Samaras. Samaras moves forward, takes the shot. It's low and it's behind the right hand post. 23 minutes almost gone in the second half and it's still that one goal on the night from Ambrose that separates the sides. Yes, and on the evidence of the first half shooting to the second half, it's, it's night and day in terms of the level of, of quality that the shots go for. We've seen plenty of good shots in the first half, just cruising the bar and being very close to the good saves. Uh, but in the second half, we've had four opportunities to put the ball in the back and at least have attempts at goal and they've went by very, very uh, harmless harmlessly and uh, obviously we try and do better than that as the game progresses but Coffin Ball are certainly growing a lot of confidence the football that we talked about uh, says that we've seen them playing and this second half they've certainly shown excellent examples of that and have some fantastic football and you would have thought they'd have been tied into this stage with you know being the, the part-time players that they are but uh, Celtic have certainly seem to be the ones who on occasion don't seem to be as pacey as what they were in the first half well Celtic have booked their place in the next round and they will have uh, a very, very stern test against Ellsberg. It's Chris Commons on the ball, knocks it inside to Gary Hooper, he flicks it back towards Scott Brown and he rolls it to the right hand side. Still got 21 minutes to go here in this second half. It's Forrest on the right touchline, has to play it back to Rogic. Rogic inside right channel, he's on his left foot, drives towards the edge of the box, just knocks it short to his captain. Back to Rogic, Rogic on his left foot. Takes the shot, it dips, and it goes behind for a corner kick, a deflection, and another corner for Celtic. Yeah, good area picked up by Thomas Rodgick, passed the ball to Scott Brown, continued his run, got a little bit of space, but Cliftonville again, which they've done on many occasions tonight, uh, managed to get a block, or certainly put the player off and off, and that occasion it was certainly a block and a corner for ourselves. Commons takes it to Izagiri. Back to Commons, Commons on his left foot, curls it to the far post, looking for Samaras, it's an easy header, it's 2-0, and that, if it wasn't game over, it is now, it's Celtic 2, Cliftonville 0. All about the quality cross, we talked about it in the second half, it hasn't been quite as good as what it was in the first half, the chances were created by crosses, uh, and there you go, Samaras, he couldn't miss that one, fired into the back post, nobody picking him up, uh, but the delivery from Chris Commons was quality. Samaras, we couldn't do anything else but put it in the back of the net in an area where we like to see him between the goals and put it in. Thank you very much, game over. Well, the quality of Chris Commons' cross there was absolutely perfect and there was Giorgio Samaras in the first half. He was denied by Conor Devlin but there was no chance for the Irish keeper there. 
and George Osama and asked Billy that it's now 5-0 on aggregate and it does look as if uh, um, Celtic may be making another substitution I'm not sure if it's uh, Amido might get a chance to come on certainly he would like uh, nothing better he scored against Brentford at the weekend his first goal in Celtic colours he'd like his first competitive goal and he may get that opportunity tonight as Conor Devlin shows some calmness there but Cliftonville have given the ball away Samaras tries to drive through and eventually Cosgrove is quite happy just to knock it behind and Samaras I think he's going to take this one very quickly trying to so on a third it's Izagiri Izagiri fires it into the six yard box Hooper gets his head on it but couldn't quite direct it goalwards and probably that second goal will, will deflate yeah. Cliftonville you maybe see the tiredness it's given us a wee lift as well a wee Joel you know to say right well let's go on the game's finished now let's go and lift it a little bit uh, and unfortunately Gary Hooper you know being in the position I'd like to be inside that six yard box but had to come away from the goal to put his header on that and try and direct the power on it but uh, just couldn't get his head enough power in it to cause any problems for the goalkeeper Rogic still in his own half takes the ball gives it to Scott Brown and Celtic once again buildings puts him from left to right goes off Hooper's heel there but Rogic manages to nick in in the halfway line tries forward down the inside right channel he's on his left foot tries to play it inside to Hooper but it's intercepted by Cliftonville and the ball knocked forward to McMullen the captain plays it forward looking for Boyce it's missed by Ambrose it's Boyce inside the box he's in a very tight angle still Boyce still jinking forward but eventually Ambrose gets a foot in and Celtic suddenly on the attack down the left hand side Commons over the halfway line still Commons knocks it forward looking for Samaras Samaras tries to flick it beyond his man does well still Samaras drives forward gets beyond Cosgrove for a sliding challenge from the right back does very well the Irishman to deny Samaras and I think I think he's suffering from it. I think he's got a little bit of cramp. The boy's done excellent all day, all game. Help support. I've never seen that before. <laughs> the, the referee's <laughs> actually helping him. Maybe he's a physio or a doctor or something. You never know. But, uh, yeah, it just shows you that uh, you know the level of commitment that Cosgrove's put into it. He's been excellent for Cliftonville. Uh, showed great determination. Again, Samaras was very quick, but by him, uh, like in the first half, where he got a tackle one to, to, to bet Samaras from driving in the byline. He's got another tackle. And, uh, no surprise that he's suffering from cramp and. Uh, if it continues, which is what uh, this early spark of the second half, midway through the second half, I think he'll be struggling to play the full game without getting any more cut because Sam and us will just want to run him all night then after. If you know he's got that, you know he'll be struggling. Uh, I'd be surprised to see Cosgrove at last the game. Well, we did say early on that the, the fullbacks in particular were going to have a hard shift because of the, yeah. the width that Celtic were yeah. providing, and that's proved to be the case. Yeah, totally. And as you say, I'd be surprised if the other side fullback doesn't get uh, the same sort of feeling. Commons with the ball into the box. It's headed clear only as far as Forrest. The ball drops down. He volleys it. The head. Oh, an overhead kick there from Hooper. It comes off the post. Goes behind. He blocked Forrest's shot, but almost a spectacular goal for Hooper. Outstanding effort. Uh, James Forrest getting edge of the box. Great shot uh, coming out. I don't think it was going anywhere near the goals. Uh, and Hooper, great reactions to be able to control it, but his quickness of thought and was very unlucky that just went the, went the wrong side of the post. Well, that was so close for Gary Hooper to getting another European goal. He scored seven so far for Celtic, and uh, it would have been a wonderful, wonderful finish. Show you what he's done for us over the uh, the last couple of years in terms of the goals he scored. But how alert he is inside the box. You know, he comes alive. He's he's somebody that has a goal threat constantly, even when he's backs to goal. You know, he can still create something. Collins tries a curler from the right edge of the penalty area, but it's into the arms of. Corner Devlin Celtic are going to make a third substitution, and so we shall see who comes on and who comes off. And it's a chance for Celtic perhaps to rest someone else. As manager will have to use his squad, he's got that friendly against the Bundesliga side Borussia München glad back here this Saturday afternoon. Then another European tie next Wednesday night, and of course, the uh, season's opener against Ross County the following Saturday. So, a lot of games. Scott Brown plays it back to Fraser Foster, he couldn't quite clear it there. And he managed to get it in the second attempt. He seemed to spin <laughs> and uh, eventually managed to uh, get his uh, hands to it. And it is going to be Amido, the Portuguese striker. He scored against Brentford. How he would love to come on and score at Paradise. Who would you expect, perhaps, the manager just to, to rest for this last it's, 15 uh, minutes? For me, there's, there's either a Commons coming off from that area in the middle and going more 4 4 2 or play Samaras, put Commons, bring, bring Samaras off and put Commons wide. 
and rest Georgia Salmas because he's obviously very vital and important Georgia Salmas for his in European football with the goals that he scored uh, so I would imagine that would be one of them to and I would probably pump for Samaras oh. as common as his number just gets put up <laughs> <laughs> well we shall see the fourth official post up and it's actually James Forrest James Forrest <laughs> ok <laughs> well Amido is going to make his home debut and James Forrest again another great performance for the young Celtic player and uh, Amido Baldi coming on, he's going to get a great reception. He comes on to be replaced by, or to replace James Forrest, and there's going to be a former Celt in the shape of Dermot Ocaro, who's going to be coming on for Clifftonville to replace Thomas Cosgrove, and that was the right back who, I don't think Dermot Ocaro's going to play right back, but he's obviously coming on for yeah, the, the right back. Yeah, just want to say, I don't think he'd finish the game because he's taking cramp, because he has started to struggle, or in Samaras, if he stayed in that area, which he is, uh, we've already come up through the middle, I think Thomas is going wide right. Uh, Samaras, when he gets the ball, he loves to run in open spaces. Uh, I would imagine that uh, it would certainly take its toll. So, yeah, a good substitution for Cliftonville. You know, that freshness hopefully coming on. Well, good game for Amido Baldi to come on as well, because Celtic certainly dominating possession and the uh, fitness is going to tell in these last 15 minutes and a chance perhaps for the Portuguese striker to open his competitive account now playing alongside Gary Hooper who came so close with that overhead kick but it's Celtic on the attack with George Samaras the scorer of the second goal he's on the left corner of the penalty area the ball breaks to Rogic. Rogic takes a shot it goes high it goes wide again he's still looking for his first goal I do like the, the look of Tom Rogic. I oh, think he's he a player they're, they're expecting very comfortable on the ball isn't he uh, he can go by player very easily um, just a, he was put under pressure there by two Cliftonville players so you can excuse that kind of shot that he had there um, but yeah certainly looks very comfortable big boy as well and, and he loves to get in the box and around about that area of of the penalty box and certainly hope that uh, he will get plenty of goals in his time here at Celtic well Celtic's front four is Commons on the right Samaras on the left Gary Hooper's just playing off the front man who is Amido Baldi and the midfield two is Rogic on the ball at the moment in the centre circle gives it to Commons and Lustig drives forward again gives it back to Commons still in his own half rolls it out to Lustig who comes in off the right touchline into the centre circle for Scott Brown another good 90 minutes under his belt for the Celtic captain Pizagiri gives it to Hooper back to Brown and Celtic I think it's certainly in this last 12 minutes or so just try and pass the ball and make Cliftonville really run about the ball switched to the right hand side, Lustig again inside to Commons, Commons moves forward, dinks it over to the far side, great ball to Izagiri, Izagiri on his right foot, clips it across, looking for Baldy, diving header, couldn't quite get that one on target but is the first to react, plays it back to Samaras, good play there from Baldy, back to Izagiri again on the edge of the penalty area, curls it across to the far side, Baldy with the header, just wide, well I'm sure he was probably thinking as he hung in the air this is my chance but uh, close to his first goal but behind for a goal kick I like the determination of him he had a diving header but up very quickly as you see first he reacts and helped it out uh, to keep the move alive and then makes himself available again inside the box doesn't stand about unfortunately just didn't quite time his header uh, as, uh, as he probably would have liked uh, but uh, yeah certainly good signs that he comes alive with inside the box and uh, I you know, certainly hope they'll continue to do that as the game goes on. Well, as you see, the back of his shot, number 17, Amido. Which I think we really call him Amido. He'll certainly be looking to get on the score sheet tonight. A goal from F.A. Ambrose in 15 minutes. A goal from Georgia Samaras in 70 minutes. Celtic 2-0 ahead on the night. 5-0 ahead on aggregate. This time next Wednesday, we'll be playing Ellsberg, the Swedish champions. And they're hoping to build up a first leg lead to take over to Sweden, another artificial surface for Celtic in recent years, of course Celtic had a very good record on the artificial surface against Spartak, Moscow, Helsinki and of course Cliftonville last weekend but it's the Irish side again on the attack inside the penalty area and Scott Brown who else, the man to defend there and I, I always wonder is there a blade of grass that Scott Brown hasn't covered by the end of the game fantastic covering defensive play you know, seeing the situation you know, causing a problem for us down that left hand side now their left hand side and Scott just going there to take it away and cover which the job he should be doing is that sort of sitting midfielder 
But, uh, yeah, you know, in the first half, he was more playing at the attack and getting into the box. And he's so vital for us, and he's driving determination, and, and hopefully he'll continue to do that. Cliftonville in possession. Smythe knocks it forward, looking for Boyce, but Ambrose read that one well, heads it forward. And it's Amido with a chance, and a good def second defensive header. McGovern, the first time he underhit it, but he did well in the second attempt. Devlin rolls that one out. Almost caught. I thought Amigo was just going to get on the end of that there, but it, you know, McGovern did very well. He just left a wee, gave a wee snuffier chance for Amigo, but uh, he get back to get that second header and then head it back to the goalkeeper. Good defender. Always penalised there for the challenge on Izagiri just on the halfway line. Thankfully, Izagiri back on his feet. Celtic take the free kick quickly and Ambrose switches it to the right hand side. Lustig over the halfway line, rolls it into the centre circle where Scott Brown with nine minutes to go has the ball, the ball almost threaded through by Rodgick towards Hooper but it's up towards the halfway line, Boyce does well read, read that bounce well tries to flick it through towards O'Carroll he tries to thread it through with the outside of his right foot but it breaks Cliftonville still on the attack now Catney in the centre of midfield and the ball knocked forward to McMullen, it seems to be captain has dropped back into the right back role Carroll, the substitute, former Celtic player. It's now with Johnson. Johnson clips it to the left-hand side. Cliftonville still trying to pass the ball on this big pitch. They've certainly enjoyed the occasion, but there was a, I don't think there was ever any doubt that uh, Celtic were going to win on the night and also win the tie overall. Certainly not embarrassed themselves in terms of the referral. They've seen them come out. First half was totally dominated by Celtic, but they've come out and shown some signs of good football, good possession. Uh, and the second half created one or two wee chances, one excellent chances, but for Kelvin Molson would have uh, had their goal. Uh, but uh, showing some signs that uh, we know they can play and play some decent football, like just for the example there. Boyce tries to flick it beyond Kelvin Wilson. Wilson knocks it along the goal line and it's cleared left footed first time by Fraser Foster. Amido challenged McMullen, but the ball breaks and it's cleared back by Smythe, Edinburgh born. His goalkeeper gets the return. Cliftonville with about seven and a half minutes to try and get that consolation goal. Celtic, of course, would look to try and add to the two goals they've scored on the night as he's a Geary picks the ball up. George Samaras helps the Cliftonville captain to his feet. And Celtic in possession again down the right hand side with Mikel Lustig. He's got Commons on the halfway line in front of the north stand here at Celtic Park. A good atmosphere, a good crowd, and a good game tonight. Celtic's first competitive home game. It's going to be quickly followed by two more next Wednesday and the following Saturday. George Samaras, scorer of that second goal, rolls it across to Lustig and Celtic push forward. Rogic, 30 yards from goal, he's on his favoured left foot, shapes the shoot. Still Rogic gives it to Samaras. Out to Izagiri. Izagiri on the edge of the box, goes to the touchline, fires it across, looking for Hooper, it breaks out the six yard box and eventually cleared good presence of mind there can play very can play inside the almost six yard box for the current I think it was well Cliftonville give away possession again and they really have run themselves into the ground tonight the Irish side they've conceded two goals and Celtic looking to add to that Chris Commons shrugs off a challenge and Rogic dinks the ball to the left hand side Good first touch there from Izagiri. Edge of the box, still Izagiri. He's inside the penalty area. Jinx one way. Curls it to the far post. It's headed behind for a corner kick. But the flag's going up. I'm not sure if it was an offside. Jamie McGovern again. Good play from the central defender, but the offside flag's Fantastic up. Fantastic play from Izagiri of jinking by the man. Taking him one way, going the other, but putting a fantastic header. But I think it was uh, Gary Hooper who just strayed ahead of uh, the two central defenders and just, you know, Lincoln obviously gave us a side, but, uh, yeah, entertaining play by, by Celtic, as they've done for most so of the game, a little bit better towards the end of the second half. Well, Liam Boyce is going to be replaced by Joe Gormley, quite often there, a front partnership in uh, domestic football over Ireland but tonight. Uh, Boyce is the man who's going off and gets a, a warm applause from the Celtic support as well as his own support a handshake from his manager and Joe Gormley will replace him for the last five minutes of this game 
Lee Boyd's done very well the last as long as he did. You know, to be able to play up there on his own. Uh, with the, you know, efforts at tireless work that he had to do up there against the, you know, probably four Celtic defenders. And did it very well. And uh, I'll be happy with his performance in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of more of the level of the second half. But he helped link up quite a few times and he helped create some of the chances that uh, Cliftonville did create. And do you think there's going to be loads of times he's going to think back to that chance oh. that's coming right to his feet and Kelvin Wilson gets that wee touch? The glory of, him. you know, he's probably read the papers and back home and you'd be watching the video on Celtic TV so many times and watch it and repeat it. Uh, you know, just like he's probably putting it in, but uh, a fantastic challenge from Kelvin Wilson just to do what he should do. And I think that's an aspect that Neil of excuse me, sorry. Neil will be very happy with it. We have kept the clean sheet so far. You know, it, you know that we've restricted them to the one good chance that Cliftonville had. Other than that, the defence has played very well. And over a lot of possession, the opposition certainly in the first half, but the second half have defended well. Logic with a shot that's just wide in the left hand post. Commons claiming for the corner kick. And Logic with that left foot, he's getting closer. That's yeah. about his third shot, and that's the closest yet. A better effort from Logic and a better effort from the second half. Probably one of the best we've had in terms of our shooting. Uh, in this second half from the edge of the box. So, you know, a lot of them are going awry and are going astray uh, early on, but uh, that was certainly a better effort from Rodic, which uh, had the goalkeeper scrambling across the goal. And uh, I think he's not afraid of pulling the trigger and having a wee go and certainly hope that uh, some of them are more will end up in the back of the net than not. George Samaras trying to link up there with Gary Hooper, but it's Cliftonville in possession at the moment with Ocaro. He's got Gormley to the right, but tries to thread it through towards Curran. Good interception there from F.A. Ambrose at the expense of a throw in about 10 yards from the corner flag down the right-hand side for Cliftonville in front of the main stand, just almost at that corner where the, the large Cliftonville support have gathered, and I'm sure they will acclaim their, fa their players at the end of the game, but I'm sure they would love in this last three minutes a goal, although uh, Neil Lennon, Fraser Foster, and the rest of the Celtic team will be hoping for another clean sheet. They'd be raging if they were to lose a goal at this moment in time, you know. Uh, especially, as I say, as I mentioned, they have played to well. For example, uh, Ambrose coming across and covering the, 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 the position that Cliftonville have got themselves into. And, uh, you know, there's not been any real slackness other than that, just that one wee chance that Cliftonville, the great chance they had. I think the defence has played exceptionally well. I know at times it's only against one man, but, it, you know, you could switch off on occasions. But through Scott Brown and just follow the head of him and the rest of the boys, I think they've defended exceptionally well and that'll be a very pleasing aspect, especially after the amount of goals. I know there's a lot of changes we did lose in my pre-season games. Neil will be happy that you know we've got a clean sheet over in the Cliftonville and another one tonight and hopefully that will continue. The delivery from you know, Louise Aguirre was just too long there. The ball played forward looking for O'Carroll. He's in a tussle with Kelvin Wilson and he skips past him on the touchline. Good skill there from the... Irishman knocks it inside to Gormley and played into the centre of the Cliftonville midfield. Catney shot to Johnson and Cliftonville again just keeping possession in the moment as we have about 90 seconds plus added time. There'll probably be two or three minutes for the substitutions and then just a couple of minor injuries as the ball's knocked out of play. The fourth official still waits. I'm not sure if he's waiting for indication from the referee. But Celtic in possession midway through their own half and a throw in from Lustig. Commons fires it across, looking for Emilio Louise Aguirre. And Celtic will now face Ellsberg, and I'm sure that Ellsberg will have a competitive game at the weekend, and Neil Lennon will make sure that that game is checked out to see the strengths and weaknesses of the Swedish side. Yeah, well, I certainly know there was two scouts, I think, from Ellsberg here tonight uh, watching Celtic, and I think they'll be impressed in terms of the way they play, the when they're about their business, certainly in that first half, with a lot of pace and determination quality as well inside the box the only thing that was missing was maybe Gary Hooper playing in the first half and being able to take the chances the ball crossed back in the box and Samaras tries an overhead kick there but just couldn't quite connect in case of trying to emulate Gary Hooper there it was more of a scissors kick but he's just been announced as the, the stadium man of the match and he's had a, a, a strong performance against you to finish off in glory by a, a, an overhead scissors kick whatever you want to call it but it uh, didn't it quite Execute it as well as what Gary Hooper did, but it was very close and off the post. But uh, yeah, George Sass was another fantastic European performance. And I know that obviously Cliftonville are not the standard of teams that were played previously. But uh, you've got to do it, beat what you're putting in front of you. And I think certainly the performance, especially in the first half, was far better than the second. Uh, we've got the goals to see it off comfortably eventually. Uh, that's just, you know, if there's any slight negative, is that I thought we possibly could have scored more goals tonight. 
Well, Celtic with three added minutes as Chris Commons almost latches onto the through ball from Gary Hooper. Celtic have had plenty of chances. The Curtinville goalkeeper, as to be said, has made a number of good saves, particularly in that first half. But uh, Neil Lennon will be pleased with the victory, pleased to progress, pleased with a clean sheet. And now he will look forward to the visit of Borussia Munch and Gladbach. It's a, a chance for uh, other members of the squad to get some game time as well before the competitive action returns here at Celtic Park next Wednesday for anyone who fancies coming along to that game. Well, I think Fraser Foster has been penalised for the pack pass, although the ball did take a, a wee knock off Joe Gormley there. I yeah. think that's what the Celtic players I are saying. I think that's what Foster said because, you know, it looked for me, it was a straight back well, pass. Well, you saw it in the replay there. Yeah, it took a wee nick off him, so Joe Foster's in the right. But I think the position that the linesmen were in the position, I don't think the referee quite seen it. Uh, of, in terms of the, the nick, so it certainly looked as though it was a back pass for Rewear, but there was a, certainly a wee touch from, from Gorman in the, in the box, and I think he's been harshly penalised there. I mean, that's where you're looking for your, the, the linesman to help the referee, because he's got a perfect view of it. I, I, I see we don't have them here, we have 15th or 20th officials <laughs> behind the goals, and uh, maybe it's something like that would have helped in that occasion. But I, I, I'll defend the referees a little bit in terms of what it looked like from from their angle possibly, but uh, that's certainly something they missed. Uh, and maybe it's the last opportunity for the Buffington Belt. He scored a consolation goal, but from Celtic's point of view, I hope they clean out because it'll be a harsh one if they do. Well, it looks as if it's uh, Eamon Sedak, the left back, who is over the ball. He's got Joe Gormley just standing on the edge of the box, who he may roll the ball to. The, le the referee has marched the Celtic wall back with just a yard or so, or less than a yard from the goal line. A last chance, I think, in this game, a chance for Cliftonville perhaps to get the consolation. Fraser Foster is actually standing in front of his wall. And I think this ball is just going to be rolled to Joe Gormley, who's just going to crack it. He takes a shot and it comes off. Effie Ambrose and spins over on the far side and out for a throw-in. And Cliftonville, that was their chance to get the goal. I think really you've got to finish with a wee bit more girl on that. With the amount of bodies and, the, and what the area of the, the goals that they cover, I think you've got to maybe try and either keep it low or a wee dink to the back post or try something different. Certainly the situation was that. The, the wall stood up, did very well, got it clear. Uh, and Neil will be pleased with that, that uh, it looks as though we're going to get the clean sheet that uh, we play certainly deserves on the night. Uh, and I think the defence have played very well. I know at the times we've not been under too much pressure, but that's taken like occasions with games like this you could switch off and, and lose your concentration, but for that one incident. Well, that is the final whistle there. The referee blows for full time. And Cliftonville, who did make a, a point of saying that they couldn't swap jerseys with the Celtic players after the first leg because they needed the strips for the return leg, I think will be swapping jerseys tonight. Celtic, winners 2-0 on the night, 5-0 on aggregate. We progress one step closer to the group stages, Tom. It's going to be a tougher game against a side who are midway through their season elsewhere. Oh. But we beat the Swedish champions last year, we can do it again. Oh, certainly. And I think we'll be happy for the level of performance that they showed here tonight. With flashes of great play by the, by the team, especially in that first half. And it gives us a, we'll another week on and further on the level of fitness as well. Uh, and we'll get closer. The game on Saturday will probably be more a, a shadow team than the one that's going to be playing next week. Probably more of these players, if not all, the start of this game will probably start that next week for Neil, uh, but it's just another, you know, good game in the way of the progression of getting through to the Champions League proper. Elfberg will come, and they'll be a far harder opposition without any shadow of a doubt. But I'm confident with the delay that we have played, certainly in the two competitive games that we've played, uh, by you know that, that we will get through that tie because I can see the quality starting to come back in the team, the level of fitness, the pass, and the play, the creativity. Uh, the only thing that we just had a slight concern tonight is the amount of goals that we scored. Of course, they could have scored a few more. They should have maybe scored a few more. Thank the foot. Uh, the clearest one was obviously Anthony Stokes. Uh, Effie Ambrose had another one. A couple of headers, Samra. So, yeah, I think Neil will be very pleased with their performance. Clean sheet at the back. Uh, and that's obviously it's another week on down the line of the, of the, you know, the start of the season. And we'll be fitter again next week. And I know that Ellsworth do have that advantage of for having played so many competitive games, but I'm sure that, uh, I think it was Helsingberg last year in that same position, uh, and we totally dominated both legs of both games, so uh, it gives us confidence going into that game, having a good victory, and back to a good victory with us. Well, job done tonight for Celtic, 2-0 on the night, 5-0 aggregate winners over Cliftonville, Ellsberg away in the next qualifying round of the Champions League, before that, of course, we have a home friendly against Borussia Munchengladbach, 
glad you could have joined Tom and I tonight here at Celtic Park and enjoyed the game. But for now, we shall hand you back to Kenny and Mark in the studio. Paul, thank you very much.